We've got a lot of shiny bits on the table, some gorgeous, sexy looking van parts. Let's first start with talking about suspension. One of the best things about adventure vans today is the breadth of suspension options that you have. This is something where only a few years ago, uh, there was no such thing as remote, remote reservoirs, adjustable shocks. It was all smooth tube shocks and leaf springs. And there are so many more suspension options now than there ever have been available in the past. So let's talk about suspension. Why do you need it? How does it make a difference? And so on. So first and foremost, these vans are undersprung. The suspension that's put on the van is made to sell the van at the dealer level. And what I mean by that is when you're selling an empty cargo van, it's going to ride like crap if it's got the proper spring rate for when it's full. And so the dealers know well enough, or should I say Mercedes knows well enough, to put kind of a middle of the road suspension on it so that when you test drive a vehicle, it's gonna feel better than uh, it would if it had stiffer suspension. Well, once you get a van built out and it's 8,000, 9,000, 10,000 pounds, what you're doing is riding on the bump stops. What we need to do is add spring rate. And when we're adding spring rate, we're also gonna talk about upgrading the shock. Shocks are a massive part of off-roading and you may not know it, but when you're going over like a washboard road at 30 miles an hour, your wheel is going up and down hundreds of times per minute. And what that does is it heats up the fluid in your shock, which is gonna cause shock de degradation, as well as even shock failure. But let's talk about the options and why they make such a difference. Suspension is one of those things where once people do it, they don't know how they survived without it for so long. Let's start with Van Compass. And we've worked with Van Compass for a long time. We recently started working with King, and I'm gonna talk about the differences between the two. So first and foremost, let's talk about shocks on a vehicle versus uh, coilovers versus leaf springs. Leaf springs are an old but tried and true technology. On the back of a Sprinter van, it has a solid axle. It's leaf sprung. Leaf springs are basically just that. They're long pieces of steel, flexible sprung steel that move up and down. They're very cost effective. They're very functional but the performance is nowhere near what a coil would be. So when you go with a coil setup, what you'll notice is in addition to a shock, which is on the inside here, you have the spring on the outside. And then you've got a spring perch on the top. And this actually allows you to raise and lower the vehicle by simply turning this uh, collar or this perch. This spring here is gonna add additional spring to the leaf springs that are already on the van. So you can't simply go to a coilover because you need something to keep the axle in line. That's the leaf springs. Now, when you go with a Van Compass style setup, you're adding additional spring rate to the rear by going with either an OptiLeaf, which is a larger spring pack, or a mini leaf pack, which adds additional springs to the spring that's already there. When you go with a coilover, this actually works in conjunction with the springs that are on the van. So you have added spring rate with this spring here, and then you see a much larger shock body a much larger piston in there, and a much larger fluid volume in addition to the adjuster on the top. Fluid volume, why is that important? Well, I'll give an analogy like a radiator in a car. You have to have water running through your engine to cool it. Now, if your radiator only had one cup of water in it, that water would get super hot and it wouldn't be able to cool the engine. That's what happens when you have a smooth body, low volume shock. That fluid is moving in and out of the small eyelets in the shock constantly and it's getting super hot and the hotter it gets the more viscous it gets which means that it moves more easily which means it's going to lower the performance of your shock when you have a piggyback reservoir shock or a remote reservoir shock you've got this entire body here uh sorry this is your body and this is your your uh piggyback this also holds fluid so you can imagine if this was just a smaller factory shock it would hold about half as much fluid as this does right here and then you combine that with like an additional 50% fluid in the remote reservoir or the piggyback. And what you're gonna have is you're gonna have fluid that's running at a cooler temperature while you're off-roading. The other major advantage to upgrading your suspension is adjustability. One of the things that we forget is what's best for on-road is oftentimes the polar opposite of what's best for off-road. On-road, you want a firmer setup with a tighter valve shock that's going to not allow as much body roll the, the van's gonna feel much tighter. It's gonna go on on-ramps and off-ramps, much better limited body roll. When you go to an off-road setup, you want the opposite. You want soft everywhere. You want compliance. The whole idea of off-roading is to make sure your tires are on the ground. So if you have really stiff uh, springs and valving and sway bars, what's gonna happen is you've probably all seen it. It's called tripoding. It's when 
one wheel of the van is way up in the air and it's not on the ground. Well, guess what happens to that wheel? It's way up in the air. It can't do anything. So when it comes to adjustability and shocks, it's really important to be able to switch between off-road and on-road to get the most performance. So if you're gonna pay for a shock, you might as well pay for an adjustable one because it's worth every penny. So this is a rear shock moving to the front shock. What's cool here, notice the difference in spring size. You see the rear spring, we're adding a lot of spring rate here. Now in the front, you actually don't need to add much spring rate. And that's because as you build out a van, you're adding weight to the rear. The front of the van, the weight is mostly comprised of all stuff that's on a van from factory. So we're talking about engine, transmission, uh, everything kind of at the front of the vehicle. So as you build out the back, you're not actually increasing the weight on the front all that much. And so what we've got here is a very small spring that's gonna help with small bump compliance. So what it does is it adds a little bit of spring rate to the front, but it doesn't overwhelm the front because if you go too big of a spring on the front, it's gonna make the ride too harsh and you're also gonna blow out the top shock mount. So what King has done here is they've made a very, see I can even move it with my hands. So this is gonna help take up some of that small bump compliance, make for a smoother ride without making it harsh or going into basically causing problems with the suspension. So that's the King setup. It's not all that different from the way Van Compass sets theirs up. Now this is a rally strut. And so you'll see that these basically take the same spot and you'll see it's as well, it's a little bit of a different way to design something. This is an inverted shock. So you can kind of see here how thick this is. This is this shock basically upside down inside of it. Here's the piggyback reservoir. It's bolted off to the side for clearance. You've got the same thing here. It's just plumbed in with a hose as opposed to being part of the shock. You have the adjuster here. For Van Compass, you have an adjuster here. You also have a micro adjuster. So if you put this into the second clicker right there, you can micro adjust here and really dial in your setup. So you can't go wrong with either one, but this one, you're saying, I love my van and I wanna hoon it and I'm going all in with the Kings. For the Van Compass, you can also build that setup, but you can build it part by part. So we just finished up the suspension. It's looking very beautiful, if I may say so myself. Here, by comparison, is a factory shock. So you can see just the sheer diameter of just the tube without the piggyback reservoir is a massive difference. I don't need to say much because you can see it right here. I think the blue suspension looks fantastic on this dark van. It's a great pop of color. This is a leaf spring we were talking about earlier, and you can see it's only two strips of metal. In fact, one leaf spring, and this is a helper leaf spring that engages as you add weight. So that's where this spring is gonna come into play to really help add that spring rate. This is your double shear bracket so that the shock is held on both sides as opposed to on a single side, which can cause this shock bolt to fail. Even if you have stock suspension, that can cause the shock bolt to fail. And then here's your bump stop. So this van's off the ground, so you can see right now, I've got about that much room with the bump stop. If you have factory suspension with a built-out Rebel, you're actually gonna have about that much space below this bump stop before the axle, which is why you get that really um, wallowy but harsh feel. So it's sloppy and then all of a sudden it hits and this totally takes away its transformative. Can't wait to go in this thing through the dirt. Whether you have a King, Van Compass, or any of the other suspensions on the market, they're all gonna completely transform the way your, your adventure van handles. So hopefully that kind of explains how shocks work and how springs interact with vehicles to help you go on-road and off.